scary stories. I apologize if this is long and it seems like I'm rambling, but most details will come into play later. I'm a 17-year-old male. The story happened to me a few months ago, about 4 or 5, but I will give details on things that happened much earlier, dating back to the 3rd grade, actually. So, here's what you basically need to know about me. As I said, I'm 17, almost 18. I live in a camper, not because I have to, but I plan on traveling, and it's also convenient. I, of course, don't live alone until I'm 18. It's next to my grandfather's house, who I live with and help out. I weigh 300 plus, I know, that's terrible, but it is being worked on. Doctors have confirmed that since I started dieting and doing light exercise, my weight gain stopped, and I've started walking daily, and am about 6 foot 3, but back in 3rd grade I was short, but still chubby. 3rd grade I had no friends, and due to me being short and chubby, I got made fun of a lot. Nothing serious, just some kid jokes but serious enough that I didn't have any friends besides one who I've known literally all my life. He's not very important to the story, though. It was breakfast time before class started. I had just walked into the cafeteria. It was pretty big, but mostly empty because most kids would arrive near the end, and I normally would too, but this day I ended up coming early. Some kid, I have no idea why, but he called out to me. We started talking and it got to games. After a bit, he mentioned he had Spider-Man 3 on Xbox and had trouble with it. I was a big Spider-Man fan as a kid, so this really caught my attention and asked if I wanted to come over and play it. I agreed. He told me where he lived, which was actually just down the road. I was a slow walker, so it took me about 10 minutes to get there, but it usually only takes 5 if you walk normally. School ended and I went home. I was excited about visiting another kid's house since I only visited the friend I mentioned earlier. I asked my grandpa and he eventually agreed after I pulled out the puppy dog eyes. I went down there and we hung out. I don't remember exactly what went down there. After that, we started talking more and more and before I knew it, we were close friends and a year had passed. I'm now around 10. This kid was bad news but in a good way in my eyes. He was a thief and a liar. We often went to the local Walmart and stole shit, and even went as far as to steal from our families. Heck, we even started smoking. How did we get to this point? Well, it turns out his father is also bad news. So it rubbed off. He taught his son things, and he taught me. And since he was one of my two only friends, I would follow, even if I didn't want to. I remember this one day, it was a Sunday. We were supposed to go to Sunday school, but instead we woke up really early, stole about $70 from my grandpa, took a bus to Walmart, and went on a shopping spree. When we arrived home again, we were supposed to be at Sunday school, which started at 10 and ended at 11. We found my father, who lived close to us waiting for our return. We got in tons of trouble, but my grandfather let us keep what we took, hoping it would make us feel bad. And it did. Skip ahead a few years, I'm now 14. My father had passed away about two years ago, and I often skipped school and argued with my grandparents all the time and would often steal and lie. I don't know why I did, but I just couldn't stop. Whenever I skipped or stole, I'd get a long lecture from my grandfather telling me stories of his past and they'd usually involve thieves or people who skipped school and he'd always tell me that if I kept this up, I'd become someone he didn't want to be around. This made me feel bad, but something finally snapped. Me and Jack got into an argument. At this point, the friendship we had was basically abusive. We'd have a blast together, but oftentimes we'd get into physical fights, and they'd often turn out in me getting beat up since I was weak and small. Due to that and the argument, we went our separate ways. He'd try texting me on Facebook. I'd just ignore him. When I turned 15, I had stopped stealing, lying, and skipping school. My grandfather also bought me a trailer, the one I live in now. He bought it for me and my brother, and it somehow turned into me staying in it, and plans with several friends to travel across the United States in it. Anyway, I'm now 16, and Jack just shows up in the middle of the night, 
I was kind of agitated since I was tired and really didn't want to see him, but he needed a place to stay the night, so I let him. We didn't talk, and I stayed up on my laptop making sure he didn't take anything. I eventually fell asleep. When I woke up, he was gone, and so was some of my stuff. It wasn't anything important, so I never said anything to anyone. Now, here's the part no one's probably been waiting for. I'm now 17. His younger brother was staying the night, however, had nowhere to sleep, so he stayed in my trailer. I say that, but in reality, he was inside all night with my brother playing games. Sometime during the night, Jack showed up with some random guy. They said that they just needed to charge their phones for a minute. I don't know why, but I let them in. I went inside to tell John, and he came out with me, knowing his brother isn't a good person. I sit down on my couch, turn my computer monitor on. Jack notices, asks what I'm playing. It was Skyrim. We didn't talk after that. However, I kept watching him. Like a hawk, he told me in a very agitated voice that I should start playing the game. I was afraid of him, to be honest, even though at this point in life, I was bigger. He still scared me from the fights we had when we were younger. I started playing. I noticed the other dude acting super tweaky and jumpy. He was high. I could smell the weed coming off of him. Jack asked me if he can smoke in here. I say, sure. He pulls out some paper for rolling cigarettes and weed. They roll up a blunt and light. I thought they were just going to smoke cigarettes. They pass it between them for a bit, then tell me to take a hit. I was curious, so I decided to just do it. It was awful. After that, I just pretended to. They left after the blunt went out. But guess what? You probably guessed right. The other dude came back saying Jack messaged him saying he was in the trailer bathroom, which was odd because I knew he wasn't. My grandpa had his own trailer, so we checked there. Nothing. We went back to my trailer so he could text Jack. After a few minutes, I shit you not, this dude pulls out a gun. A real gun. When he was in here earlier, he was playing with a BB gun. So when he pulled out this gun, mumbling stuff, me and John were kind of laughing, thinking it's a joke. It wasn't. Me and John realized this, and both stood. He said that he wouldn't shoot John, since he's Jack's brother, unless he did something. And would shoot me if I didn't listen. You ever hear the fight, flight, or freeze response? Basically, when confronted with a dangerous situation, people will either fight, run, or freeze. I froze. I was afraid. Luckily, John was there. He may be younger, but he gave me just enough confidence to try talking the guy out of it. But it wasn't enough. Eventually, I succumbed, giving him what he wanted. He left. I was scared shitless, and John was pissed off. After about 10 minutes, we had the great idea of going out to look for him. Luckily, we didn't find him. Want to know where Jack was texted from? He was texting on his way to Texas, by the way. Anyway, I didn't call the cops until the next day, out of shame of letting the robber in and for letting myself be robbed. That being said, this all happened because Jack didn't like me and had his friends steal my shit. So take this as a message and don't hang out with the wrong kind of people. I was about eight years old and lived next door to two brothers around my age. Every Sunday, they attended what was called Sunday School. It was a Christian event held for kids at a local elementary school in the auditorium. They would play games, eat lunch, sing songs, and learn about the Bible, etc. I always wished I could go with them, and one day, my mom finally let me go. There was a bus that would pick up the children from their homes and dropped them back off afterwards. I was so excited that morning, eagerly waiting for the bus. When we arrived at Sunday school, we started out playing games outside like Egg on the Spoon and Tug of War. After that, we had something to eat. Then we all headed into the auditorium to sing songs and listen to the priest give his lessons. After all of that was said and done, we were free to leave. Children that arrived by bus were required to wait around for about half an hour or so before our driver showed up. There were roughly 20 of us waiting. The friends I came with were talking to some other kids, so I went to sit by myself, too shy to mingle. I've always been a very reserved and introverted type of girl, and in hindsight, this may have saved me in this case. The priest was walking amongst everyone, stopping to chat to some of the children. 
That's when he noticed me sitting alone and approached me. How you doing, darling? Why are you sitting alone? You don't need to be shy. I don't remember my response or if I even responded at all. Sometimes I would just sit there and be mute when people talked to me. He proceeded to give me a fancy pen as a gift. I politely thanked him. This is where things get weird. These words are imprinted in my brain. Do you know how to get to heaven? I shook my head no. I can show you. How about you come with me behind the stage and I'll show you how you can get to heaven. Being young and naive, I didn't at all think this was creepy. No alarm bells were ringing. I guessed he wanted to take me back there because it was a secret and he didn't want the others to hear about it. I felt a little special that he had asked me. However, my timidness got the best of me and I shyly declined. He seemed a bit agitated by this and moved on to another girl. I watched, regretting that I turned him down. I hear him ask her the exact same thing. He did me, except she said yes. I was jealous. Why didn't I say yes? I wanted to know how to get to heaven. I watched him take her hand, lead her to the end of the stage, up the small flight of stairs and behind the curtain to the backstage area. I never saw them reemerge by the time I left. Later that evening, I told my mom about what had happened and asked if she knew how to get to heaven. I really wanted to know and I wished I went behind the stage with the priest like the other girl. I can't remember how she reacted. All I know is that she didn't let me go to Sunday school ever again. It wasn't until I was much older that I realized how bizarre it was. What was he going to show me? You have to die to get to heaven, right? So, was he going to kill me? Or was I moments away from being molested? What happened to the other girl? Who knows? Maybe it was completely innocent. But why the need to go to a private place to be unseen? So many questions I'll never have answers to. But I will always wonder. I was once a student teacher in an elementary school. And there was one student we all saw as the problem child. She was always ranting about how she and her parents were the only good people and that the world is evil. She acted like a raging bully to her desk neighbor, so we put her desk apart from the group. Once her desk was separated, she stopped being rude and sweetly said, It's nice and safe here. She would make friends with someone and then start acting horrible when they got close. She tackled a kid for bumping into her in the hallway. She was seven and wasn't able to brush her hair or dress herself. She had poor hygiene and said her mom insisted on bathing her. She had an IEP but didn't show symptoms. According to her parents, she faked being neurotypical at school but was autistic. In third grade, she swallowed a lot of pills mistaking it for candy and had to go to the hospital. She stopped going to religious services at seven and would throw a fit if her parents tried to take her. Once the super Christian kid did a class presentation about his trip to the Vatican City, this girl was covertly pulling her hair and stabbing herself with a pencil during. She said her scabs from preschool injuries that hadn't healed due to picking. She is now 19, and after she graduated, I found out that she had a delusional disorder and heard voices from God. She believed everyone was in league with Satan and out to get her. She had extreme paranoia that people were going to kill her, rape her, etc. Her parents strongly encouraged this and didn't want her to have friends besides them. Her mother's friend assaulted her twice in the week before her first day of kindergarten. She was also abused by two mentally disabled boys, aged 10 and 12, in her occupational therapy. Her mother has Munchausen's syndrome and wanted a mentally disabled child, which this girl wasn't apart from the delusions and a brain injury in sixth grade. She was teased at Sunday school by some kids and physically and verbally abused by her parents because she had suicidal thoughts and, quote, God hates murderers, end quote. There is a bittersweet ending because while she admits that she doubts being able to function normally after everything that happened, allegedly attempted suicide six months ago, she is leading a suicide prevention 
initiative for young kids and is campaigning for domestic violence legislation. She's still permanently traumatized but relatively happy and stable from what she said. She's somewhat open about her past and it's relative to her activism. This old man, I don't know his name, but let's call him Mr. Pedo. This man always used to follow me when I was 8 or 9 years old. So for the first time I saw him, he was selling cigars, candy, chocolate, all of that stuff. I was walking to school and saw Mr. Pedo staring at me, probably like, what the fuck are you wearing, or something like that. But when it was still class hours, I went outside and saw him sitting and looking at me. School is near the park, so of course, as the scared-ass child I am until now, I ran back inside. So came dismissal time. I went out, of course, and was walking to my mom's office because I'm like that then saw him again. This time, he was touching me in harmless ways, like holding my hand. That's all. Fast forward days later, I was with my mom walking on the sidewalk where there are too many people and where my personal bubble is being invaded. She held my wrist tightly so I wouldn't get lost and cry. Anyway, I was and am an anime lover, so I would be like those animes where their other hand is left behind while they are being pulled by someone. While doing so, I saw Mr. Pedo again, and he held my wrist and tried to pull me. I ignored it and never told my mom about that. Yet, Mr. Pedo is like a weird guard and scares the fuck out of me. Whenever we meet... He touches my back, stomach, wrist, and some other places except for the breast and the you-know-what. So came Sunday, and I swear that will be the last day he would touch me. I went out my school. We have Sunday school, and if we don't go there, our grades will get low. He touched my fucking growing breast. Of course, I was going through puberty until now. I'm 11 years old right now. After touching my breast, I ran to my mom's office and told her about that man, but didn't tell her he touched my breast. After that, the man kept on seeing me, but he was afraid of my mommy, so never met me again. After that, I had to go to another country to learn. After years, went back and forth from summer vacation, and now I'm back to the so-called other country. Didn't see the man in summer and hoped he died, so Mr. Pedo, let's not meet again. Nasty, dumb motherfucker. Forgive my words. I just hate him so much.